many options for a rifle action type for hunting, and that's what Guy and I are gonna discuss in this video. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with the hunting man, Guy Miner. Thank you for joining us, Guy. Of course. Nice way to spend the afternoon, talk about yep. hunting rifles and hunting. I that's like it. That's right. It's a Friday. We are here filming, talking about hunting, talking about different types of rifle actions, and what you have to choose from and why you would pick. And in fact, you've hunted with everything here except one type, is that correct? That is correct. The only thing I have not used in hunting mm -hmm. is the slide action or pump action rifle. And I know some of you guys love those things. Yes, and they can be quite potent, quite effective, and they're yes. classics. They are. <laughs> okay, so in terms of the format, we're gonna talk about some considerations that you can mull over, that you can evaluate before you decide what type of rifle action you're gonna hunt with. And then we're gonna go through all of the different types of actions on display here and talk about kind of some of the pros and the cons and, and some of their sort of parameters and attributes. Uh, and then summarize at the end, kind of doing a roll-up comparison and we want your input as well. Okay, so considerations. First and foremost, affordability. Uh, some of you have told me, hey Gavin, that's a really nice rifle, this full custom 22 GT. Uh, but I don't have that kind of money. Well, right. the good news is there's a lot of options here to choose from with some of these action types that are going to be down around $200 maybe at, at the starting point. Yeah, if you've got a $250, $300 budget for your hunting rifle, mm -hmm. no point looking at a $3,000 rifle. Right. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Exactly. Uh, another thing to consider, and, and this kind of goes into what is the nature of the hunt, right, is at what distance are you gonna spot that animal and decide to take a shot, right? Right, right. If uh, I've got our little 357 Magnum Henry mm -hmm. in hand, I'm not trying that 300 no. yard shot at an elk. It's just yeah. not gonna, it's not the right tool for that job. Right, and if you're in Alaska and you're 20 feet away from a brown bear, you want something that you can get reliable follow-up shots with. Yes. So the range is kind of a double edge situation there, yes. double-edged sword, with, with the far and the accuracy, the near and, you know, optics type and magnification. We're not going to get into all those accessories necessarily, uh, but something to think about. Uh, and then in tandem with the range of the game, especially in the long distance department, is what kind of accuracy are you looking for? If you're at a sage rat shoot and your little sage rat pops his head up 300 yards away, that's not an impossible shot with the right equipment. Right? right, right. You know, and those things are tiny little targets. Um, they have to get shot, the farmers want them shot. Yep. And tiny target, sometimes some pretty long distances, mm -hmm. you gotta have very accurate rifle for that. Yep, and then you've got some big game that have limited vitals in terms of their size, right? So you might have some of those same considerations with, you know, I wanna be at one MOA. And if you wanna be at one MOA, that might steer you away from one action type and towards another. Mm -hmm. uh, I already sort of alluded to this with my brown bear comment, but game size, tenacity, and danger, right? Uh, you don't wanna piss off a bear and then have to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. No, right? or, or trail him into the brush when he's wounded because yep. you use something inadequate or placed your shot badly, yep. something like that. Um, elk, bull elk can be very, very tenacious of life. They're not bulletproof, of course, mm -hmm. but if they don't get hit right square in the vitals, they can lead you on a merry chase. Yeah, now they tough, can go a long, long way. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay, and then uh, it has a lot to do with you as well. What are you familiar with? Maybe what do you have at your disposal? You know, maybe you've inherited grandpa's, you know, slide action, pump action, and maybe that you you saw him use it. It's a family thing. There's an affinity there. Uh, maybe you have a lot of experience with a lever gun and that's how you get your follow-up shots off. You know, that there's a lot of things to consider there. And then of course, I love this picture and this is a picture that you took of your son hunting, right? Yes, yes. And not too far from here actually. Uh, we have steep terrain around here. And when you're hiking up these mountains, every pound counts, you know? So yeah. you're thinking about weight and then you're thinking about cartridge and recoil, right? It's a, it's a whole equation. It all, it all kind of comes back full circle. It does, and that is not where I want some, you know, 15 pound match type rifle to lug up and down those hills. I'm yep. heavy enough without that. See, you I know? would try that, because you <laughs> know, know me, you I like my big heavy optics, I like my yep. heavy stocks, 
heavy bull barrels, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm looking for a rifle that's more around eight or nine pounds all up. Yeah, so. no, that's a, that's a great goal. Okay, so let's get into it. First, and probably most prolific, is the bolt action. We have a bolt action that I built here on a bat bumblebee action. This is a 22 GT with a benchmark carbon barrel, XLR element 4.0 magnesium chassis, carbon fiber buttstock. This is not your average bolt action rifle, but I had to put it on set because I like it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I got I had fun shooting it yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, taking it on some steel yesterday at modest range. Uh, but it was it was oh, that's a nice rifle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not in your three hundred dollar category. Yep. No. So let's run through these criteria, and these are all the same. We're gonna we're gonna talk about these same criteria as we go through each action type. So reliability extremely good probably hard to beat i would say for a bolt action absolutely you gotta figure they were made for war they mm -hmm. they starred in world war one a lot of them still in world war ii and then it continued on at least in our country uh for sniper service mm -hmm. in korea vietnam and since yeah present day so they're still using those bolt actions so those things were made really rugged um one of the nice things they protect the ammunition you've got it in a magazine inside the gun it, the ammo itself is protected from the weather very nicely. True. Uh, and the bolts hold up very well to some adverse Action. conditions. Yeah, it's a very reliable. If you have a problem, easy to clear. If it you is. need to manually load, you can do that quickly. Yep. I've had a situation where I didn't have my magazine with me. You know, you can drop load them. It might sure. not be the best situation. Absolutely. Yep. Cycling speed, okay. I've seen some guys, a uh, Matt Hornback comes to mind training for PRS, and that the motion is so fluid, so fast. I can't say I can do that. Uh, for most people, it's gonna be kind of in that okay department. Right, right, and you can train up to get really fast with a bolt. You mm -hmm. see a lot of the, the mat shooters get that mm -hmm. way. They can, mm -hmm. they can move that bolt fast and, and get second, third, fourth shots off in a hurry. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's okay, because there's others that are also very fast. And same with follow-up shots. Right. It it's, goes it's, right into that. Especially in a hunting scenario, unless you're, you know, maybe prone, it's going to be, there's going to be some disruption in your sight picture, which makes a great case for a lower power scope. Mm -hmm. If you can get by with that, and if it's, if it, if your game is close enough, you know, and it's a matter of practice, obviously. And, and I've done both kinds of follow-up shots. I've done follow-up shots in a hurry because the animal was getting away. Mm -hmm. I hadn't made a great hit or the great hit hadn't, hadn't stopped the animal. He's getting away. And I've also had an animal coming at me, getting closer and closer. <laughs> and I'm saying, now, you know, I think I'm going to shoot him some more. Yeah. So, and you're getting going on that in a hurry. That was with a bolt action. Nice. So. Yep. Okay, so accuracy and precision, hard to beat. Uh, yeah. You know, the... Bolt action rifles are used in bench press competition. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Optics and accessories, uh, it's gonna depend on your rifle, but overall, you're gonna have really, really good options. You know, whether it be a Weaver or a Picatinny rail, you're gonna have no problem finding rings and a scope, and you're gonna typically have really good clearance. You don't have to worry about your hammer like you do on a, on a lever gun, you know. So that's, I'd, I'd say it's kind of hard to beat uh, the ARs are also very good in terms of, you know, having the different accessories and options uh, available. And they cost all over the place. For a bolt action, oh yeah, anyway. $200 rifle. The bottom end is around $200 and then $10, five, five $6,000 yeah. or more. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. You could definitely find a way to spend the money. Okay, so on to our second type, semi-auto. Now this is actually a pretty big domain, right? You've got your Mini 14, you've got all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. We're kind of focusing here on the AR because it's the most popular semi-auto rifle platform currently. Right. And it actually is set up pretty nicely in terms of, you know, I've got a full length pick rail here from the receiver all the way forward to the handguard. We've got some flip up Ultradyne dual aperture C4 sights on there. Uh, we could put a reflex sight on there very easily. We could put a, any kind of scope we want, you mm -hmm. know. Very flexible. Yeah, and AR-10s, AR-15s, both of them are very adaptable to lots of different kinds of hunting. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody hunted with them when I was when I was a young guy. Uh, right. I never saw them in the field. Anybody. Now, every time I go out in the hills, somebody's got some kind of an AR. <laughs> All right. So kind of cool. Yep. Tell now. So you've used 
the AR platform in the military and in law enforcement. Right. Tell me how you think about you know, reliability. You know, reliability's come a long way. I've talked to some of my old Vietnam vet buddies who <laughs> had the original M16 foisted off on them without, and all the bugs weren't worked out and they weren't trained on how to keep it running right. Yeah. And they were very, very unhappy and still to this day do not like the AR-15 and M16 platform. In my experience, in both the Marines and as a uh, as a cop, um, wow, very reliable. Keep yeah. it keep it reasonably clean and properly lubed, and feed it good ammunition, and mm -hmm. that thing just plain works. I've found that a lot of the bolt carriers like to, to be run pretty wet. They do in order to cycle completely and to cycle you know reliably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like to run wet, but I'm not in a real silty, dry, deserty environment hunting mm -hmm. all that much. So that could be an issue. Most of my hunting uh, with the AR platform has been for varmints, mm -hmm. like rock chucks and that kind of thing. And, and they work really good for that. I like the fact that you have such good follow-up shot capability and speed. You know, especially you might have two or three rock chucks in an area and you can kind of pick them off one, two, three. Or if you had that situation where the, the, the bear is coming at you and you're like, back off, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you've got a coyote. Mm -hmm. they, make, they make great coyote guns mm -hmm. and maybe you pop, maybe there's two or three coyotes together, which happens. True. And you pop one and the other two take off running. Yeah. With an AR, you can get them. Yeah, the real good hunters can use both eyes open spotting the wide angle with the, the naked eye and then looking magnified at the, the current animal in focus and, and, and do that. that, that's a skill that I'd like to develop, you know? And that's where you get the multiple, multiple kills, mm -hmm. you know? It's crazy what people can do with enough practice. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, a good one for that would be uh, all the folks that do the hog hunting down mm -hmm. south and southeast, mm -hmm. and they get into some big groups of hogs and they're just trying to knock down as many as they can, as big a hurry as they can. Call out to 4MR Ranch. He's got a bunch of really cool oh. night hunting stuff and all, all sorts of different hog hunting related scenarios and similar. Uh, accuracy and precision can also be all over the place. I would figure you can typically get one and a half MOA with the right ammo, mm -hmm. you know, with an AR-15, uh, but it definitely gets a lot better. Gordy Gritters and I just filmed a whole series on accurizing the AR platform and we got a six arc down to third MOA. Nice. You know, which is right up there with uh, some of the bolt guns. Obviously some of the bolt guns get a lot better than that, but. Uh, yeah, not many. For hunting, that, that's no that's, slouch right that there. That is really good. Yep. yep. Uh, again, we already talked about how good the, the platform is for accessories and modifications. And, and I'll expand that to ergonomics optimization. You know, we've got a, a long, this is a Magpul PRS butt stock and we could do something telescoping. I mean, the options are completely <laughs> unlimited, it feels like. And again, cost, modest to expensive. If you are gonna buy something from Palmetto State Armory or Bear Creek Arsenal, you know, you could be down in a couple hundred to few hundred dollar range. Right. You know, and then all the way up to, this is a premium rifle, this Endeavor from CMMG. Um, you know, you could spend more like a couple grand on that. So, options. Lots of options. It's funny, the bolt action and the, uh, the semi-auto have a whole lot of different options. Hey, you just open up your catalog, your yeah. parts catalog for guns and look up Remington 700 or a AR mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. and the list of things you can get, is it, it, it never ends. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so how about one of Guy's favorites, the lever action? And you know, I do not hunt with a lever action as much as I would like to. Mm -hmm. uh, they are awfully fun. I shoot one quite a bit, mm -hmm. but I've only hunted sporadically with one over the years. Gotcha. And it's just uh, just because I'm kind of grew up as a bolt gun guy most of the time for my hunting. But the levers are nice. They're so traditional. Yeah. I just I love the looks and the feel of it, um, and it makes a good hunting. Hunting rifle, it really mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. so. Hunting rifle, ranch rifle, you know, defensive rifle, if you feel like that's something you need it for. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, we were just filming Hornady FTX bullets and they cover the whole spectrum pretty much. They do. In, in the lever gun. So reliability is good. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite as simple in terms of the mechanism compared to a bolt action. Cycling speed is also good, highly dependent on the skill of the operator, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever seen some of those cowboy action shooters get going with their pistol yeah. pistol cartridge, uh, 
lever actions. Yep. Oh my goodness, they'll have four or five empty brass cases in the air at yeah. once. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like a full auto going off almost. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Follow up shots again in the good category. It's going to be you know a little bit like the bolt action. There's a little bit of stuff going on there to disrupt things and whatnot. Uh, accuracy. This is not the platform for extreme accuracy, but can be quite good. It can be. I was really amazed, particularly with the uh, big bores, the 444 mm -hmm. Marlin and the 4570. Mm -hmm. The amount of accuracy that you can get out of one of these lever actions is kind of mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. Now, you start stacking three of those big 45 caliber bullets all That's on top awesome. of each other at 100 yeah. yards. It's like, wow, okay, I'm, I've got my attention. Yeah, love it. Optics and accessories. So the Henry stuff we've had no problem with. You know, our, our X model in 3030. We've got the hammer extension. We've got mm -hmm. a rail. We've got optics. We have a Picatinny rail on that one. Put a suppressor on it. It was already threaded. The threaded muzzle. Excellent. This one is a little bit more traditional in its configuration. So mm -hmm. uh, we can still run the hammer extension. We can still put a rail up, which we're going to do here shortly. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, it's um, been fun shooting it just the way it came from the factory. Oh, absolutely. Basic rifle and, yeah. and so much fun. 357 um, mag, great, great chambering. Yeah, it is. Ones. It is. Yep. So we would put that in the okay category. Depends on the brand of, le of lever gun. And you're not going to have the same options, but you'll likely, you'll likely get what you need. Mm -hmm. And then cost, this is not to, uh, as much of a budget option. You're not going to have that sort of Thompson Center Compass $169 on crazy Black Friday sale thing going on here. This is more of the seven, eight hundred on up. Yeah, and there's category. there's some very expensive lever lever gun options mm -hmm. out there too, um, which would be really cool. But, but compared to handcrafted shotguns, uh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 <laughs> affordable. That, that's a different world. <laughs> okay, I, I love this thing. This is a 7600, is it, or is this a 760? This is a 760. Okay, this so is an older rifle. Remington 760. Totally looks like a shotgun to me, <laughs> right? Operates somewhat like a shotgun. Very much a perfect, <laughs> perfect rifle for somebody who hunts with an 870 pump. Is yeah. that is that's their bird gun, or maybe it's their shotgun for deer hunting in one of those mm -hmm. areas. And then you also want a rifle that works pretty much the same way. Mm -hmm. This is a good answer. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a good answer for a lot of things. And I only put a few rounds through it yesterday. I had never shot one of these before. I'd heard all kinds of great things about them. Mm -hmm. And um, talked to a friend of mine into loaning it to us. So nice. got that and uh, there we are. A part of hunting is experiencing something different. That's yes. a part of the shooting sports in general. I would love to hunt with that. Yeah, I, I uh, like the idea just because, yeah, it's something different. It is, it is. Um, and if we go down our list on the, on the reliability, from what I understand, they're way up there. Mm -hmm. Very reliable action. Uh, cycling speed, I found out, was fast, and I wasn't very fast with it myself, and we'll see that on, on the video. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was good enough, and I have heard that people can get really fast with it, mm -hmm. because you just move from that slide back mm -hmm. and forth, back and forth, and bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat for those follow-up shots. Yeah. I think this gets into that category of, you know, it's an experience to run one of these things. The early 50s, did you say? Yeah, I think 52 is when they came out, and mm -hmm. they ran the, the uh, 760 up until, I think it was replaced in 81 by mm -hmm. the 7600. 7, yeah. Okay. And, and it's a, uh, a little different. It looks about the same, it mm -hmm. works the same, and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, a little, little different. And one of the things that intrigues me about them, this one's 30-06, which is, of course, one of my favorites, but they yeah. also make them in 35 Whalen. Oh, interesting. Or they have, oh, yeah, and that's a lot of bullet. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, really cool stuff. It'd be interesting to put it on the bench and see, you know, sandbags maybe even, and just see what kind of accuracy we could get out of that. It would, and it's, uh, it's drilled and tapped for a, uh, for a scope base. Okay. So we've got a nice little Williams sight on there now, but, yeah. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. A, you could, we could scope it. Yep. So limited options in that domain. I think so. But you might be on Gun Broker, kind of looking for a while, and you know, piecing things together. But that might be part of the fun, right? If you want something that isn't mainstream and is special, you're likely to have to go to a little bit more right. work to make that to make that happen, right? And these are not cheap. We found out. No, no. And it, it, I seem to remember years ago they were being a you know somewhat less expensive option for a hunting mm -hmm. rifle. 
not what we found mm -hmm. looking online to think about buying one and I was like oh my um, ouch so yeah. but things have gone up yeah definitely so if you have one of these slide slash pump action center fire rifles and you use it for hunting love to hear about mm -hmm. how that came to be and kind of what you're using it for okay single shot this is one of the this is one of these actions that you really like, isn't it? I love that thing. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I first saw a Ruger number no. one. Oh gosh, back in the '70s, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't afford it. It was there at the dealer, you know, mm -hmm. and it was like no, thirty out six. Okay. And I oh, I was all about that thing, but I couldn't afford it. And yours yeah. is a seven rem mag. Is that this right? one's a seven rem mag, and okay. my other one is a three seven five H and H. Right. So, um, it's. It's a really special type of gun. Uh, falling block action, patterned after the old uh, British uh, Farquharson, I think is how you say yep. it. And you just drop that in, you drop the lever, the falling block goes down, you put one cartridge in, you close it up, you shoot once. You mm -hmm. drop the lever, ejects that cartridge, put another one in. It's mm -hmm. a little slow. Yeah. You can get pretty fast if you train up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like anything, you, know, you practice, you get pretty fast with it. It all depends on what kind of experience you want when you're out hunting, right? Yes. Um, so reliability, I'd put it excellent. There's just mm -hmm. not that many moving parts there. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything is very heavy duty. Uh, cycling speed, it's slow. It's the yeah. slowest of all these up here. Right. That's fine. Follow-up shots are, are could be problematic. <laughs> um, yeah, accuracy can be quite good. I had a heavy barreled one in 25-06 mm -hmm. that was shooting in the threes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, I should have kept that one. <laughs> I've uh, said that. Yeah, so accuracy can be very good. Most of the time, mine, mine run around an inch or so at 100 yards. And that's mm -hmm. that's fine for me. Um, there's not a lot of different accessories. Uh, Ruger sells these things with your uh, your rings on them, and so you can scope it with whatever you want. And, are you uh, limited to like one inch rings? No, there are 30s available. Okay, well, that's yeah. good. And there's also rings that'll move the scope back a little farther because that's a problem on this action type. Hmm. Okay. Um, and before we just talk about single shot in just terms of the Ruger, got to mention that there's some real nice break open ones, single hmm. shots. Mm -hmm. um, Henry makes one. Mm -hmm. um, Thompson Center, of course, has of course. dominated yep. that with, for years with the Contender and the Encore. Yep. I do not have one of those, but I've shot them and I mm -hmm. like them. Mm -hmm. And they make, a, they make a darn fine hunting rifle. Yeah, you know, one thing that we don't have on here is strength, and I think, you know, like for single shots, that's definitely a plus. Yeah, particularly for the Ruger. It's a mm -hmm. very strong action, and because it's so strong, it's been chambered in an amazing variety of cartridges, including things like the 470 Nitro, <laughs> um, you know, the other things like that that, yeah, no. Bruising may that, occur. That's enough, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had that? You, you you take off your shirt, you know, and you're like, oh, well, what happened there? Oh, yeah, I was shooting a 300 Magnum all day yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, that, with my uh, 4570 <laughs> and some real hot loads yeah. one time, it was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had it where I could see the <clears throat> texture of the butt pad, you know. <laughs> Maybe that was the Mosin Nagant. I don't know. It's oh, smooth, man. but, man, it's there's nothing there. It's just a steel strap, right? Right. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and then cost, this is also not a real affordable budget-oriented kind of pathway. This is more of a no, this, heritage type situation. Yeah, you, you, want a, you want a Ruger number one, it's gonna cost some money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine, you know, is it's a pretty special rifle. Um, I like it. And I have hunted successfully, I've taken antelope, mule deer, and black bear with my Ruger number ones. Nice. So, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so why don't we kind of wrap it up. Here's the high-level grid all of the different action types we've talked about, and we're just kind of broke it down into highlights and lowlights. So for bolt action, I'll speak to this one since I'm actually familiar with this one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Highlights are accuracy, reliability, and cost. If you're looking at that lower price tier, so much available there. Ruger American, Thompson Center stuff, Savage Axis, and the list goes on and on and on. Right. Just so much to pick from. Uh, accuracy, reliability is excellent, and 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 the cost is great. Low lights. The only thing I could think of is speed. It's, it's not the fastest thing in the world to cycle. No, but it's fast enough for most hunting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially with a little bit of practice. Yep. Semi-automatic. Like I said, with the varmint hunting scenario, follow-up shots are amazing. They are. 
They Especially are. with the right compensator, you know, and the right brake maybe. Oh, your crosshairs never come off target. Yep. You know, oh gee, the wind blew me a little bit to the left, fine, mm -hmm. I'll hold a little bit to the right into the wind, and boom. There goes the sage rat. Yep. Yep, really good stuff. Really manageable recoil too because of mm -hmm. the way that the bolt cycles. Uh, low lights. Er, you were complaining about the ergonomics. Which is funny, as, as many <laughs> years as I've carried an M16 <laughs> or an AR15, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they could be a little, I don't know, kind of clunky. Yeah. So. Going um, through the brush, you know, I, I've snagged a bunch. I was actually using a Ruger Precision Rifle, but similar ergos, right, you know, right. same butt, type of buttstock and things like that. Yeah, just uh, can be clunky depending on what you're doing. Um, reliability can be a problem. Ammo can be a problem. You know, uh, pretty picky about how it's lubricated and, and yep. all the rest. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then cost is, can be a low light, right? Can be, you know, because, yeah, you want to buy a nice CMMG, you're, you're out some money. Right. It's, uh, or some of the other, you know, better AR platforms. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not cheap. But you can also get into an AR-15 amazingly inexpensively. Sure. So. Yep. Definitely. I do like that. Okay, so lever. Talk about lever. Oh, uh, lever. Yeah. Brings out the inner cowboy. Yeah. You know, I you pick one of those up and all of a sudden you start hearing, you know, the spurs jangling, mm -hmm. you know, walk, walking around, that kind of thing. Yep. Well, maybe not. But <laughs> it's such a traditional American rifle. Yeah. Uh, the cowboys and, and all these, you know, the trappers and all this stuff had these things and they still work. And you are not, um, you're not limited to just the traditional old lever action cartridges. Right, like the 3030. Like 3030, 40, yep. like If you want to get into something like a 308 Winchester mm -hmm. or even a 30 6 you can do that with some of the lever guns. Yep. So that's kind of neat. Uh, but I do like the experience of it and I like it. I like the rifle as simple as I can keep it. Mm -hmm. So they're just nice to carry they're that fine. way. I, that's what I feel like when I'm cycling the action, oh, even yeah. if I'm not thinking about John Wayne or whatever. It's just fun. It is fun. It's interactive. I totally love that. Okay, low lights on the lever. Um, typically don't have the precision that you can get out of like a bolt rifle. Mm -hmm. Not not usually. And then the, uh, the costs tend to be a little bit spendy. Mm -hmm. uh, in today's world, I know everything's gotten expensive, but a decent lever action is not going to be cheap. Yeah. And of course, that depends on your budget. Right. It didn't seem entirely like that, subjective. Right. Didn't seem like that long ago. You could pick up a nice used thirty thirty Winchester or a Marlin for a couple hundred bucks. That's just impossible to I, even imagine now. Yeah, and that wasn't yeah. that that wasn't that many years ago. Yeah. But now, whew, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so pump, highlights, reliability. They seem to they seem to run pretty reliably. Now. Neither you or I have a whole bunch of experience here, but... Nope. Well, you know, I, I shot it a few times yesterday. It shot every time. Uh, cycled well, ejected. Uh, and everything that I've read about uh, the things, they are they are pretty good. There was a fellow who made them very, very famous, a guy named Larry Benoit. Hmm. Uh, hunted in New England mostly and up in Canada a bit. And he would literally walk down a big buck. That mm -hmm. was his thing, stalking them mostly in gotcha. the snow. And he used these slide action Remingtons. Uh -huh. um, and he made them famous. Interesting. Yeah, so that, that were his choice. And the books have been written about them and lots of magazine articles. Nice. So, yeah. Um, cost is kind of a drawback. Yeah. They're not cheap. Um, and there's not a lot of options for these things other than putting a sling and a scope on mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. so, and for some of, of you, that's going to be just fine. Right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the single shot, uh, you got to love the simplicity and strength. You know, it's just like a rock. It's just it boom. is. <laughs> it's very, very sturdy. Uh, I love the lines of the Ruger. I got to admit, I just like the way it looks mm -hmm. and the way it feels in my hand. They're a little heavy. There's some models that are lighter. They're a little heavier than you might expect. Um, but that helps them be nice to shoot. Yeah. Seeing Bruce Tom's handcrafted Falling block rifle was truly an experience with that like bird's eye maple and and just everything just just like a timepiece, you know? Nice. Yeah, I'd like to actually try shooting that thing. <laughs> there you go. But they are slow and they are costly. So like anything else, there are trade-offs, right? Even even when I trained up to be able to reload my 375 mm -hmm. in a hurry, because I was using it for a bear rifle. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I got pretty good with it. Even then, it is slower than a bolt action or a lever action mm -hmm. for, for that follow-up shot. Sure. And uh, yeah, they're, they're expensive. You could consider that a challenge. There's a bit of a thrill knowing maybe you only have one shot before. Yes. You know, yeah, I, series. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was Mission cool. Mission critical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a pretty good summary. So th the question is kind of what are you looking for to hunt with this year? Let's say it's this year. Well, for me? Yeah. For me, this year, I am staying away from my bolt actions Ooh. if I can. Yeah. And, and I usually hunt with my 30 out 6 and my 25 out 6 okay. Remington 700 bolt actions trying to stay away from them. They're, they're such an easy answer, and they do all <laughs> right. these things so well. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna try and use my lever actions mm -hmm. and my single shots. Mm -hmm. I like it. We'll see how that goes. Very nice. I'm kind of thinking about the bolt action for big game, and I'm thinking about the AR for coyote hunting at mm -hmm. night with the thermal, and any of the other kind of rock chuck situations we're kind of beyond that season now but maybe we extend it till next spring and think about sure. that yeah so our question to you is what are you going to hunt with what is your favorite action type for hunting and why also what are you going to put through it for ammo what chambering and what are you going to shoot with it drop a comment and we'll start a discussion thank you guy for joining us this was a fun discussion thank you it was yeah that concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.